Just turn the handle to fire loads of discs. So this is a fully 3D printed Gatling gun. First, a slow motion shot to show how it works. Simply turning the handle fires disc after disc. Now in real time, The parts are arranged into four separate prints to cater for different infill and the use of supports. Make sure you use the correct settings for each print. Total print time is around 14 and a half hours. Once the printing is finished, the first job is to remove the supports. The model is designed to use the minimum amount of supports and only three parts will actually have supports on them. The support should come off quite easily and only take a few minutes. Just a quick note about the spring. The reason that the spring is printed on its side is to ensure that we get a smooth flat surface. If we compare it to one printed in a different way, you can see the difference on the surface. The smooth surface is important to ensure that the trigger mechanism works correctly. OK, now we can start to assemble. This will use the four identical bolts. We recommend that you screw the bolts into the frame first to make sure that they fit correctly. It's a good idea to do the same type of test fit for all the bolts on the model. So the first parts that we're going to attach are the disc holders. These are designed to hold the disc before firing. These were developed after useful comments from user Creator on my previous disc shooter. It's important to put the two parts in the right orientation, hence the left and right labelling. Just in case some printers have difficulty printing the small parts, there are alternative midsections without the spring disc holder. This part of the assembly takes a very steady pair of hands. The easiest way is to balance the two spring holders on the main part and then lay the top piece on top, but be very careful not to drop any of the parts. Then to hold it all in place, drop in the screws, but don't tighten them at the moment. The screws will help hold all the pieces in place. Now we can start to tighten them one at a time. Before tightening fully, make sure all the edges are aligned. Then tighten firmly, but take care not to over tighten and snap the bolt. If you look through the front of the model, you may just be able to see the springs inside, although this doesn't show up too well on the video. The next piece we're going to attach is the main spring. As this was printed on its side, the hole for the bolt may not be perfectly round. To fix this problem, you can either use the deburring tool, just to run around the inside to round it off, or a piece of rolled up sandpaper, just to sand the inside of the hole to make it round. The next step can be a little bit tricky. You need to insert the spring into the slot on the top piece. And then push it up until the holes line up. Then take the small bolt 
and fasten the spring to the main body. Be careful not to cross the thread on the small bolt. Before tightening it fully, make sure that the spring is straight and then tighten. Once again, be careful not to over tighten and snap the bolt. The mounting has been designed to reduce the amount of stress on the spring. Next up is the main gear, which uses the longest bolt. To attach the gear, you have to very carefully put one of the blades underneath the spring and rotate slightly to push the gear into place and then insert the bolt. It may need a little bit of wiggling to make sure it goes through correctly. And then tighten the bolt. The firing mechanism is now complete. Next, we need to add the crank. This uses a medium sized bolt with the enlarged head. This slots into the side of the main body and the bolt is tightened into place. Check to make sure that the crank moves freely and the main gear turns and triggers the spring. Next, we can add the crank handle. The handle is designed such that the bolt fits inside of the handle and is recessed slightly. This prevents your hand rubbing against the bolt while turning the crank, which could risk undoing the bolt. Simply attach and tighten. Check that the handle can spin freely. It's now almost complete. The only parts left to add are the caps to the handle and the top piece. The handle is hollow to allow storage of spare discs with the cap to keep them in place. The cap is the same size as the cap that fits on the top. This cap on the top is there to stop discs flying out. The discs tend to jump around inside the tube with the power of the spring. We can now turn the handle to make sure that everything's working. If we turn the model to the side, you can see how the main gear turns and pushes against the spring and the spring is specially shaped to give more power. So the only thing left to do now is to try it out. The tube can take up to 14 discs but I'm only going to use three discs for this test. If we tilt it forward, we can check that the disc holder inside is working correctly and the discs don't fall out. After chipping paint off the wall several times, I've learned to use a cardboard box as a target. This helps to absorb some of the energy. But it's not advisable to use a target at this short range because the discs can still bounce off at a fairly fast pace. As I mentioned, the tube itself can take up to 14 discs. However, due to the fast firing rate, some people may prefer to have more discs at hand. So included is the extension tube, which can take a further 15 discs. 
which simply clicks onto the top of the unit. Loading is done in the same way by dropping the discs in at the top. But now it can hold 29 discs. Again, I'm just going to use three for demonstration. Obviously the handle can be turned much faster to increase the firing rate and you will use up all 29 discs very quickly. To remove the extension tube, simply pull it off and then replace the cap on top of the tube. And that is the disc Gatling gun. I hope you found the engineering interesting and you'll have fun with the model.